Hello and welcome to EduSathi. Let's continue the chapter on algebra with the topic of inequalities. So we are at point number 6. We have already covered certain topics. There are certain properties of real numbers that you should know when you are talking about inequalities. Inequality means not an equality sign. Till now whatever we have done was with an equal to sign. Now I'm going to introduce less than greater than less than equal to greater than equal to and not equal to so all of these are basically the signs for inequalities inequalities means the left hand side is not equal to the right hand side part it is unequal not equal it can be greater than less than greater than equal to less than equal to or not equal to so these are the basic signs that we'll use when we are doing inequalities so let's look at some properties for linear functions first if x is greater than y then minus x would be less than minus y that means if 5 is greater than 3 minus 5 would be less than minus 3 multiplying with a negative sign changes the sign of inequality so if you are multiplying with a negative sign the sign of the inequality changes second if x is less than y then minus x would be greater than minus y so 3 is less than 5 minus 3 would be greater than minus 5 the next being if x is greater than y and y is greater than z then very very obvious thing x will also be greater than z so 8 is greater than 5 5 is greater than 3 that means 8 is also greater than 3 and if i use it in reverse if x is less than y and y is less than z that means x is less than z that i have now if x is greater than y and i add a same constant on both sides a or if i subtract the same constant a from both the side the sign of the inequality remains the same so if 5 is greater than 3 If I do a plus one on both the sides, which is six is greater than four, or if I do a minus one on both the side, the sign of the inequality would remain the same. It's the same sign of inequality that I have. If x is greater than y, then multiplying with a on both the sides, the sign of the inequality would remain same. So if five is greater than three. and i multiply with 5 on both the sides i'll have 25 greater than 15 but if a is negative negative means if i'm multiplying with a negative number the sign of the inequality would change so 5 is greater than 3 but if i multiply with minus sign on both the sides it will become minus 25 and minus 15 this is lesser than minus 15 the sign of the inequality changes whenever you multiply with a negative sign i hope this concept is clear to you right now if x is greater than y i'll just write it here if x is greater than y then if i take reciprocal 1 by x and 1 by y Can you tell me what will be greater? Now, for example, if five is greater than three, one by five would be lesser than one by three. So, one by five would be less. One by five is twenty percent. One by three is thirty-three point three three percent. One by five would be greater than one by three if x and y both of them are positive. Whereas, if x and y are negative. Let's look at the case. Minus three is greater than minus five, right? So if I take a reciprocal now, minus one by three and minus one by five. This is minus point two. This is minus point three three. This will be a greater number that I have. So the original thing that you have would be maintained if the numbers that are given to you are in minus. So it will be one by x. Over one by y, if x and y, which are given to you, are in negative sign. 
I hope this is clear to you. Let's move ahead and let's look at the absolute value function. So for an absolute value function, if mod x is less than a, so I'll take an example, mod x is less than 5. Now when I remove this modulus sign, I will use a plus minus sign. So I'll get plus x less than 5 and minus x less than 5. So if I use plus x, x is less than 5, if I use minus, minus x less than 5, and if I bring the negative sign to the other side, the sign of the inequality changes. That means x is greater than minus 5 and less than plus 5. That means x belongs in the range minus a to a. x would be between a and minus a. If mod x is greater than a, then I'll again open it with a plus minus sign. Once it will be plus and once it will be minus. x is greater than a and x is less than minus a. So x is less than minus a and x is greater than a. So if you look at it, this is the range for minus a and this is plus a. If it is the first scenario, my answer would be between minus a and a. If it is the second scenario, my answer would be apart from this answer whatsoever other values apart from this answer. Minus a smaller than and greater than plus a. Now mod of x plus y is less than or equal to mod of x plus mod of y. This is also known as a triangle inequality. Sum of two sides is greater than or equal to the third side that you have. So mod of x plus y is less than or equal to mod of x plus mod of y. Similarly, mod of x minus y would be greater than or equal to mod of x minus mod of y. And if I just combine both of them, mod of x minus mod of y is greater than or equal to mod of x plus minus y. This in turn is less than or equal to mod of x plus mod of y. So if you, when you add up these mods, mod of x plus mod of y, that is greater than combined mod of either x plus y or x minus y, which is actually greater than the mod of x minus mod of y. So let's look at uh, the rules for a quadratic function. Now the function is if x minus a into x minus b is less than 0. That means the quadratic equation would be x square minus ax, sorry, ax square plus bx plus c is less than equal to 0. Instead of being equal to 0, it will be less than equal to 0. Here alpha and beta, let me write it as alpha and beta, whereas a and b are actually what? Are actually the roots of the equation. Then, this is very, very important. Then, if I plot the graph, this is alpha, this is beta, if you look here. Now, what is happening? I want an answer which is negative. So, it will be plus, minus and plus because here the answer which is coming out to be is in a negative zone. Then my answer for x will always be between the two roots that I have alpha and beta. Here the roots that I have taken as a and b my value of x would always be between the two roots. Vice versa if x minus a into x minus b is positive I will take this region that means x has to be less than the smaller root and greater than or equal to the bigger root that you have. If you have x square, let x be positive or negative, x square will always be greater than or equal to 0. Now if a is greater than 1, a square will always be greater than a. So if a is 5, 25 will always be greater than a. Whereas if a is between 0 and 1, then a square would be less than a. So if you take 0 0.5, 0 0.5 square is 0 0.25, which is actually less than 0 0.5. So if the value of a is between 0 and 1, a square would be less than a. If the absolute value of a is greater than 1, I should write here the absolute value, then a square is greater than a. And the last one being, if a is greater than b, a is the bigger and raised to some power, that power is positive, 
a bigger number raised to a positive power would be greater than the smaller number raised to the power same so if 3 is greater than 2 3 square would be greater than 2 square that means 9 is greater than 4 that I have let's look at some of the questions related to inequalities the first one being if x square plus 3x minus 10 is greater than 0 then x lies in the interval if you look at a question like this it's a question of quadratic equation how to solve the question we'll solve the question assuming the case that it is equal to 0 we'll find out the value of roots alpha and beta then plot the graph and then look at the required region that we have so if it is like this I know the sum of the roots is minus b by a which will be minus 3 the product of the roots would be minus 10 so this is the value for sum and the product that I have so if I try to break that product into uh, product into something like minus 5 and plus 2 what will be the sum of the roots minus 3 what will be the product of the roots minus oh, sorry, minus 10 so the root value that you get are minus 5 and 2 now if you draw the graph for this it will be a positive because the coefficient of x square is positive this will be minus 5 and this will be now if you look at it the value of the function is positive here it is negative here and it is positive here you want the value of the function to be positive then x has to be greater than 2 I will not write equal to because here it is greater than 0 it is not equal to 0 and x is equal to 2 the value of the function is equal to 0 or x has to be less than minus 5 so my answer would be x will be less than minus 5 and x would be greater than 2 that you have so x has to be greater than 2 and x has to be uh, less than minus 5 so if you look at the options that you have none of the option matches with the answer that we have so my uh, answer option should be x should be less than minus 5 or x should be greater than 2 the answer option that we have here is for the question x square plus 3x minus 10 less than 0 so if it is less than 0 my answer would be between the range minus 5 to 2 would be negative in the range minus 5 to let's look at another question for quadratic I have to be it is has to be less than equal to 0 so I know this is positive the graph that I'll get would be something like that this will be the value of alpha this will be the value of beta it will be plus minus and plus so my answer would be between the two roots so because it is equal to this is alpha this is beta my x would be less than equal to beta and greater than equal to alpha so x would be in the range of alpha and beta now the only thing that I have to do is find out the value of alpha and beta if I go back to the equation sum of roots is what 4 the product of roots is what 3 so the roots would be 3 and 1 so it will be 1 greater than equal to x greater than equal to 3 so my value would be in the range 1 and 3 both included let's look at another question find the interval for which the equation will hold true now if you look at it when we have done the case of quadratic we have written the roots as this it is x square a x square plus b x plus c can be written as a this is the product of its factor for a cubic it will be written as 3 because it has 3 roots here there are 4 so that means it's a 4 degree equation that we have so no problem I have the value of the roots with me this is minus 10 this is minus 2 this is plus 5 and this is plus 1 these are the roots that I have for this equation now the only thing that I need to understand is whether it will be a plus minus I, this 0 is just a tentative thing it is between minus 2 and 1 whether it will be plus minus plus minus or it will be minus plus minus plus there are always alternate signs that you have in the adjacent uh, uh, blocks because the function changes its sign
it will be from positive to negative or negative to positive so what you can do is look at any of the range which is what zero if you put zero zero minus one minus one into plus two minus five and plus ten if you just solve the value the value is coming out to be positive is hundred the value is positive so here i'll have positive it will be negative here positive here negative here positive here i want the answer for negative that means my x has to be has to be between minus 10 and minus 2 or x has to be between 5 and 1 for the question to hold true thank you so much for watching this presentation uh, please move on to the next presentation on coordinate geometry if you wish to practice more on inequalities please move to our website edusathi.com to practice more questions and have tests on these topics thank you so much have a nice day